What are a million, a billion and a trillion? I have seen several analogies referencing how to make sense of one million, one billion and Some one trillion. Some are pretty good, but I have what I think is a great way to visualize numbers like this. When you hear the politicians talking in terms of trillions, you'll hopefully be able to make some kind of sense of the number. Most people have no clue. Stick with me, I'll make sense of it. A dollar bill is 0.0043 inches thick. If you take 1 million of those 1 million by 0.0043 or 12 and divide by 12 to convert inches to feet, you get about 358 feet. A football field is 300 feet long. And each end zone is 30 feet so, deep. So, if you take a football field and add both end zones, you can think of that as 1 million and the thickness of a dollar bill is 1 part per million. That helps put parts per million in perspective Anytime as well. Anytime you hear someone talking about so many parts per million, just think of the thickness of a dollar bill in comparison to a football field with both end zones. So 1 million is a football field. Dot 1 billion is 1,000 million. So... 1 billion is 1,000 by 358 equals 358,000 feet or about 68 statute miles. When you miles. hear someone say billion just compare the thickness of a dollar bill to a town that's 68 miles away. 1 trillion is 1,000 so 1 billion. trillion is dollar bills stacked 68,000 miles. Now, the Earth is approximately 24,000 miles around at the equator. So, 1 trillion dollar bills would make a stack that would wrap itself around the planet nearly three times. I don't know if you've seen this or not but they show a total of unfunded liabilities in this country to be nearly 108 trillion. I don't know if it's totally accurate. So, since each trillion is a stack of dollar bills 68,000 miles long, the money it would take to pay off our unfunded liabilities would make approximately 30 stacks of one dollar bills to the moon. Assuming the moon is 240,000 miles, average distance our government has promised 108 trillion to date. And, Unfunded means they have no clue where the money will come from to pay it. Am I making any sense here? What does this mean to I'd you? I'd like to know what you think this means and how you think it will affect your life. Seriously, think about this. Dot from the movie Animal House, lol, SMX6. Not sorry to sound flip, but many of the unfunded liabilities clocks or calcs are for more than a hundred years into the future, which is pretty dubious as it assumes things will grow at the same rates for the time you can pretty much see that never happens. Note that, with the exception of the fact that we're in a recession, the article still stands the test of time. Re, unfunded liabilities you can get scared, or have it keep you up nights, but this is a version of Reaganomics. I don't say this to be political. Reagan was the first president in my memory to try and explain the wimpy paradox I'd gladly pay ya Tuesday for a hamburger today anytime you can get something now and pay for it in future dollars, you save big time assuming that inflation occurs in digestible amounts. This is amounts. pretty much how things in our modern day financial system are designed, a dollar in 1920 was worth a lot more than a dollar in 1960. And that 1960 dollar was also worth more than a dollar in 2010. So if you buy something for $10 in 1960, and don't pay for it until 2010 when that same $10 is worth a lot less. Then you wind up ahead. Dot hoping that all makes sense for those who have not heard it before. Shruggy, Russ H. We can thank all of this to the fraud called fractional reserve banking. You two are obviously aware of the complexities here, and honestly, I don't feel like typing Plus it out. Plus, it would pointless as there are books out that describe this. For anyone interested in the largest scam of the 20th century, read The Mystery of Banking by Murray Rothbard. In short, the partnerships between the large banks and the government created the inflation machine we have had for so long that steals incrementally from us each and every year. But the point here is not to focus on the negative, but to use this information and learn how to profit from this inefficiency in the marketplace. Like Bounce mentioned in another post, we are currently in a deflation eye, but not for long. It may be a few more months, or maybe a couple of years, but it won't last forever. Then we will be in for a ride of inflation and likely hyperinflation. This is when you want to own hard assets, land, gold, silver, oil, commodities, foreign commodity-based currencies, or companies that benefit from a commodity-driven economy.
Maybe even My start point a farm. is that these financial promises are going to be paid. An unfunded liability really amounts to a promise that I couldn't make the link work for some reason. Over the next hundred years, the promises will continue to stack up. If someone is in their 50s, like I am, and they think they're going to retire on Social Security at age 65, they're dreaming. Anyone who has learned to rent their lives away by the hour in exchange for money that they then use to pay their bills will never be able to retire. It is not going to be possible to save enough to retire when the value of those savings evaporates away like dry ice in the face of inflation. The DB plans are going People away. People probably aren't aware of this but the Delta pilots lost their DB plan altogether in Delta's bankruptcy. Some pilots that had been retired for years lost their entire income stream and had to start filling out job applications. The pilots that are still flying are now lobbying to have the mandatory retirement age increased to age 70. I know one retired pilot who is stocking shelves at Home Depot and driving a van to and from the airport for some hotel right now. He's working two jobs now and he had been retired for years. Snowbank was talking about people's why in another post. If people don't have a why they probably won't change. Well this should provide enough of a why to get some people off the couch. If people continue to exchange their time for money as a method to pay their bills, they will work until the day they die. Look at the numbers. The government is not going to be able to make right this Right now, work. the politician's financial plan is to simply make more promises and print more money. To anyone having trouble finding motivation to get off the couch and get moving, to act, envision the certain future you'll have of working every day until you die, that is, if you can find okay, a job. Okay, so let's assume that none of the things we need to do are going to happen anytime soon. What does it mean soon? to you personally? What are you going to do about it, yourself? What I am trying to do is get people to look at what's clearly, in the area of government finances and translate that into not only how it's going to affect them, personally, but what they are going to do about it, if anything. I guarantee you, the average person doesn't even see a problem. The average person is I doing nothing. I guess this nothing. thread is for those who have achieved some level of financial success. I really don't worry about the national deficit, I know it's going to affect but me. But I figure if all hell goes loose, that since I'm poor. I wouldn't even notice that much. After I make my first million, then I will start worrying about macroeconomics. Until then, the best investment my poor self can do is maintain a current passport just in Bounds, case. You don't know Jskut. Here are his first two remodel or flip threads. Jskut, how many houses did you buy and sell last year? 2009 was your first full year doing this, right? Bounce, the dude has his act together. And I can guarantee you he's thought about this stuff. He just doesn't want to fight you and I agree. Nothing will be gained by the two of you going head to head on policy. Both of you are very strong in this area. But I would guess the topic would involve political ideologies, which are verboten on the fast lane. Scott if you told Bounce what you're doing your master plan W or houses, and other things that is more of the answer he was looking for. I actually started writing a response. But life got in the way she's 3 1 or 2 and way cute, so I'll finish it later. Russ H. P.S. Bounce just got used to post more frequently. He's taking some time off the boards right now because he too has a small bundle of energy in his life. Demographics are important to consider as they have big impact on the economy and government policy. Russ H. and J. Scott, I apologize if anything I said led you to believe I wanted to argue or come to a head on anything. Sometimes intent doesn't come across real well in print. I obviously you. left the wrong impression. Sorry. If it helps, I took the you in this to be plural. In other words, he was talking to the forum, not directly to J. Scott. Of course, I've been wrong on this before. The issue here is the the only way to learn something is to be able to both sides, and I think that this thread provides that. I don't see any personal attacks in these. Do we posts. have to afraid to have an intelligent discussion? I haven't figured this out yet and would like to have the opportunity to learn. Bounce. Are you asking for specific examples of what we are doing to cope with the current economic I situation? I wasn't even necessarily asking you, Scott, specifically what you would do. I was do. simply taking what you said and offering it up to the group as a topic for discussion. That's what my intent was. Sorry if it came out as something else. I wholeheartedly agree with you on what we need to do. In fact, as a society, it's the only long-term answer. I just don't think it's going to happen. And yes, I'd love to hear about your master plan if you feel like disclosing it.
most people don't even have one dot what I think is that the average working stiff is going to get crushed as time goes on. As inflation takes off, the buying power of a fixed income will diminish. Fixed income means anyone on an hourly wage as well as those living on things like social security. Anyone carrying a credit card balance is really going to get hammered as those interest rates go up. Any baby boomers who were planning on social welfare to pay their bills is in for a shocker. They'll never retire. Taxes will go up, spending power will go down and the middle class will get caught in the squeeze. Trading hours of your life for money i.e. a job and then spending that money paying bills and credit card interest is not a good financial plan going we forward. We have some time before inflation takes off. Emo, now is the time to act out personally. I have three items of advice colon one get rid of any and all credit card debt dot two trade dollars for real things that pay you to own them i.e. buy assets three acquire as many income streams as possible using none of your own money or as little as possible. Answering this last item could take a master's degree program to do thoroughly, but I guess that's what we're here no, for. No, I am asking for specific examples of what anyone is doing to cope with the economics. The point about the numbers was to get people Emo, to look forward. those that react to things after they change are going to be late to the party. Have you noticed how the word trillion is suddenly a part of our society's daily lexicon? A freaking trillion? Nobody who utters that word has any clue what it really means, yet it seems to roll off people's lips with amazing ease. A trillion dollars will make a stack of money that will wrap itself around the entire Earth at the equator nearly three times. And, we're looking at trillion dollar deficits as far as the eye can see. Another word that I hear with amazing regularity that nobody seems to have a clue what it means is unsustainable. Okay, so it's unsustainable. What does that mean? Those that can figure out what the results of unsustainable are and act on that right now will be ahead of the curve when the inevitable comes. A lot of people are going to get very wealthy as the rest are I crushed. truly believe we're in for the biggest transfer of wealth the world has ever I'm seen. I'm not talking about any single event that will occur all at once. It will be a process that plays out over and time. And yes, how are the fast learners going to profit from the new economics? Okay, gotcha. I was a bit off on my semantics. But I understood the intent. I have been working on my plan now for the past two years. I sold my business which was closely tied to retail consumption. It wasn't the ideal time financially to sell, but I had other reasons, I can go into in another discussion. But it paid off all of my debt except for my residence and put a nice chunk of change in my pocket. I also sold all of my commercial re with my last property closing in September 2008. I took all of this cash and sat on it. When the market crashed, I was like a fat kid in a candy store. I was buying rock solid companies and stupid low prices. I can go into investment strategy in another discussion as well. I sold stuff. I downsized. I cut clutter. I moved abroad. I have diversified globally with both investments and business interests. I have shifted a huge amount of investments into commodity based investments gold or silver ETFs and companies that are globally diversified into commodity-based economies. I manage my money with a tight grip. I am taking my time to learn new skills so that I don't have to rely on others as much in I the past. I am learning both Russian and Spanish languages in order to become a better, more well-rounded global citizen and communicate more effectively with my partners and clients. I am in the process of selling my house in the US and making plans for a permanent move to a no-tax country in South America. I'm working on a couple of new business plans that are low upfront cost, but provide necessary services with very high margins. I am currently seeking partners. I have created a work environment that requires nothing more than a laptop and I'm a mobile phone. I'm highly mobile and highly liquid, but my assets are earning enough passive income for me to live the remainder of my life in this manner if necessary. I am not content with this, but it is the backup plan. I think you and I are on the same page as far as the things to come. And you are correct, most people have no idea or just don't care. And that is sad. Even for those without wealth, that is no excuse to just sit back and say, this doesn't pertain to me, because it pertains to us all regardless of economic situation. We are in the midst of a cataclysmic change in the world, but we are much like the lobster in the warm water, right now it feels nice. But when it boils we won't be able to get out, we Have will be Have you considered cooked. Mandarin? LOL just kidding. No kidding? What country? Mi esposa y yo vivimos en España tres años. Hablamos español más o menos. Fui 20 y 5 años pasados. 
Fui un piloto militar en España. Sorry for the lack of accent punctuation. I agree wholeheartedly. Global's response. That's it right there. Dot. The first step is protecting yourself from simple things that can hurt you like carrying and paying interest on consumer that debt. That stuff has got to go. Dot. The next step is trying to understand how to think about the new I paradigm. I have been trying to take myself back to the 70s and remember who it was that was getting rich back then. Dot. We'll see stagflation again. Many people get wealthy in those conditions. The question is. WHO and how did they do it? Dot one group are debtors. If you can lock in a long term low interest rate on a securely performing asset right now, you will win big time going forward. Dot the problem there is the long term part. I haven't seen any lender willing to lend on a fixed rate for more than about seven years. I'd prefer 30. The only loans I've seen with that long of a term is residential owner occupied. Dot I own my house out right now and it occurred to me to finance it at whatever the rates are right now 5% plus or, and put that money to work. But honestly, I think I'd just as soon give up whatever income I could create with it and keep my house as sacrosanct, free and clear. So, getting out of consumer debt and into cash flowing debt are two very smart moves right now. What else? Good Spanish. You were in Torrejon, I believe. Probablemente, vamos a pasar a Uruguay o Argentina. Exactly correct. Do we know each other? Lol. No chist. Argentina es un país muy pobre hoy día, verdad? Por Argentina. and Niet. That's it for me. God, where am I? Is this a Paradell universe? That's right. We're in America. We need to be speaking English. Here, here, groove. He he he. I'm an aviation fan, so I know the Yusuf has a base there. Love the F-16. My second favorite fighter after the F-15. Colon Yusu underscore naughty. I forgive you. But I know some guys that wouldn't. SMX 19 colon lol. To tell you the truth, my first preference was the F 16. Even started to build an F 16 cockpit in my garage lol to use it with Falcon 4 with my own instruments. Altimeter, O, airspeed or Mac, RWR, etc. Good times. But I came to like the F 15. Even with the extra turn rate and with the all block upgrades. I think the F-16 still has some miles to catch the F-15 as the A fighter. Of course the Block 60 or PW-220 I think or maybe the PW-200 is a really a good match for the F-15. I guess we'll have to agree to disagree here, Bounce. I see this as an economic it's strategy. It's no accident that this is happening it's planned that way. I can see by your words a promise that how you feel about this. And I appreciate your telling people about this problem I'm sure a lot of the folks who read the these forums don't know that borrowing money today to pay it off decades from now is how our current economic system works. Is there a point at which we'll have to pay the debt? But as you say, by that point, inflation will have tempered the debt substantially. When it was introduced 1935, it was intended to help those who were so old or injured, they couldn't work anymore. It was anymore. originally called the Old Age, Survivors, and Disability Insurance Program. Back then, most folks didn't even live to see 65 colon life expectancy of men in 1940 was 53.9 years for women, 60.6 years. In 1940, there were 9 million people in the US 65 or older. So, a manageable program for those who were just too old to work disabled, in mental decline, etc. Fast forward to 2010 colon in 2010, life expectancy is 75.7 men and 80.8 and women. And instead of 9 million folks over 65, there are now 40 million. And by 2030, it is projected to be over 70 million. Hence the scary upside totals in unfunded mandates carried 100 plus years into the future. The whole concept of retirement is a 20th century invention. I'm of the mind that people are going to have to work instead of retire. But they won't like They'll it. They'll choose not to do it, unless they have to. What would it take for someone to choose to work instead of retire? Well, their retirement savings could be lost or significantly reduced by stock market crashes. Or, their employer's retirement plans could go bankrupt or the company itself could go bankrupt and all the retirement plans could be lost. Dot, but that will never happen. Bounce. Eh? I really do think that's what the plan is. Dot, keep the boomers working into their 80s, if their health lasts. Dot, if you keep social security, adjust it to reflect the longer lifespan. Yeah. Dot, as it was originally intended, as disability insurance for the very old and decrepit. Dot, and as for all the lucky ducks that have retired for the past 50 years, and live for decades on social security. Well, 
They were fortunate folks. Dot. That's not going to continue. The younger, smaller generation is not going to stand for 40% social security They'll taxes. They'll figure out how to avoid paying social security as much as possible. Dot. Talk to anyone in their 20s or early 30s. Most will tell you they do not expect to ever see a dime of social security. Given this mindset, it's likely they will do a lot to avoid paying into the system. Dot. You want to know what we're doing? We're heavily invested into real estate stuff that generates hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash flow and has lots lots of tax write-offs, aka expenses. Our gross last year was just a hair over a mil. This year we should crack 1.2 mil. And if we ever get back to 2008 type levels or prices, our gross will be in excess of $2.50 mil. Not sure what we'll use that extra cash for yet. Might use it to pay off debt. Or we might stick it into stuff that loves inflation. Thanks. Russ H. Didn't knew that Uruguay's banking system was good. Russ, it's interesting that you say we'll have to agree to disagree because you go on to explain many of the points I was trying to make. We agree on a bunch I'll of explain. this. Yeah, that's how it has worked. But trillion dollar deficits as far as the eye can see are new and the demographics have changed. We won't have enough kids entering the workforce to pay these astronomical bills, especially as interest rates begin to rise. If we disagree at all, it's right here. Moreover, you seem to agree because you clearly explain the point I was trying to make about the fact that there will be no retirement for the baby boomers in general. Savings and 401ks and IRAs destroyed by inflation, DB plans taken away by company bankruptcy proceedings. These people will be forced to continue to work for the remainder of their useful lives. I don't disagree with most of what you say below. The only problem is the word never got passed down to the masses that SS wasn't supposed to be retirement money. In fact, if you continue to work, they take the SS away and tell you that you don't need it since you have an income. That act alone pretty much makes it retirement doesn't it? After all, if you don't quit working you don't get it pre anyway. Moreover. Your point about old folks living longer is exactly correct. The only problem is, they're going to be in their 80s in the next 10 to 20 years, not 100. There aren't enough workers in the workforce to pay those bills. Borrowing money now to pay off in the future worked great when the tens of millions of baby boomers were there to pick up the slack for the World War II generation. But the boomers didn't have enough kids to pick up their slack. The math isn't there. As a result, there is going to be plenty of pain the to go around. The boomers will never be able to retire and the kids of the boomers will be left with tens of trillions of dollars in debt that they'll have to either pony up for, or default on. It's gonna be ugly either way. All that sounds great. The payoff debt part is smart if it's consumer debt. If it's debt on cash flowing assets and the interest in tax deductible, I'd keep it and use the money to buy more assets. Here's what I think is going to happen to the boomers. They're going to reach age 60 and after a quick look at their 401k and IRA statement, they're going to realize that retiring isn't worth the risk. Their company may go BK and terminate their DB plan as Delta Airlines already did a couple of years ago and then they'll be left with virtually nothing. As thousands of pilots were dot they will continue to work and at some point the company will realize that the boomers are slowing down and burning out. The company will realize that they can hire three energetic 30-somethings for the same money. The company money. will offer the aging boomer some kind of deal to get out and the boomer will then have to find other work Walmart greeter or a table cleaner upper at Mickey D's for instance. They're already there. Dot as this process plays out, the trillions of dollars the government prints will circulate and inflation Those will take off. Those of us off. who owe money on cash flowing real estate will win big, but grandma and grandps will get hosed, big time. The next generation, now in the workforce will get hosed as interest rates go up and the payments on the interest become a greater and greater part of the total GDP. What happens when the interest payments on the debt exceed the total GDP? That's where the term unsustainable comes from. There is no way this can go on. Borrowing money today by the tens of trillions to be paid off by the next generation will not work going forward. The numbers forward. on the debt are too big and the numbers of the working force are too small. This is the reason I wanted to put a face on the word trillion. The word trillion has meaning, but most people just let the number roll off their lips as if it's no big deal. A trillion deal. is a huge deal. The reason the borrow now and pay off later won't work is because the debt is too big and the next gen is too small. The interest alone will be unsustainable. They'll have to monetize the debt which means simply print the money they if need. If we really comprehend how big the word trillion is, 
and then look at how many trillions they're having to come up with, it becomes easier to understand what unsustainable means. So, when the government does finally default, what happens if then? If we look around the world, we can see what's going on in countries that have already reached that point. What is going on in those places? Who is getting richer and who is getting poorer? I thought I saw a headline where the richest man in the world is now in I Mexico. I too am interested in hearing more about your master plan Scott exclamation mark colon Yarok. I agree. Maybe I should have framed this whole thing in terms of debt to GDP instead of simply explaining what a trillion is. Here is an interesting graph. I have no idea how credible the author is. But it looks about how I would expect it to dot check out Zimbabwe, even Argentina looks great by comparison. Here is an interesting graph. I have no idea how credible the author is, but it looks about how I would expect it to dot check out Zimbabwe, even Argentina looks good by comparison. The problem there are multiple with the voting mechanism is the majority rules. What does the really mean? On the surface, that seems nice, but is majority rules really a positive thing? I don't think so. The reason is the majority keep voting for more social programs because they want a nanny state. They want free health care, welfare checks, food stamps, social security, Medicaid, etc. They truly believe that the state has our best interests at heart and the state is actually more capable of managing our affairs than we are. Don't believe me? Look at the government budgets over the past 70 years. They have increased and they are increasing at a faster rate than the population growth. This means our government is spending money at a rate faster than we are making babies. Our government spending to human ratio has climbed virtually every year since the 30s. This means the government continues to spend the tax money of the productive members of society to take care of the less or unproductive members. But guess what? The productive members of SOCI are in the minority so their vote counts less than the votes of the parasites. Essentially this means the parasites control the outcome of the government and its monetary decisions. In the early 1900s you had to be a property owner to vote. I would to love vote. to see this implemented again, but this likely won't happen as the snowball has already gained too much momentum rolling down the hill. History has proven that every world superpower didn't stay that way forever. We have reached an absolutely unsustainable level of government debt. The only way to fix a mess without complete sovereign debt default is for the government to dramatically shrink at least by 30%, but this won't likely happen. I truly hope it doesn't if so, I am very happy to eat crow, but doubt it. If we continue to inflate away the debt, our creditors EA China and Japan will begin to demand much larger interest payments thus increasing our interest expense and driving up out federal deficit creating a downward spiral situation. Either way. I hope you have moved out of cash and into assets that move inverse of the dollar and hang on for the ride. Exactly. And that is the best plan for riding out the greatest transfer of wealth in human history. Well said, Yagra with your whole Over post. half the population in 2008 paid no taxes. This would be one good definition I of I was parasite. going to comment on this, but my comments probably bordered on being too political, so I decided not. The point was that we, as voters, I usually left with two political candidates that are both losing choices, and it generally becomes a popularity contest or bullshit artist contest that decides the winner. But Global summed it nicely and in And by his productive reply. I mean those that create economic productivity. This can be measured in many ways, business owners, investors, high net worth individuals, etc. Just because I love my cousin Eddie and he does a good job at his work pushing the red button all day doesn't mean he is creating economic productivity. And he likely is not a taxpayer because he makes a low enough wage that his majority rules deductions allows him to reduce his taxable income down to now zero. Now he is consuming public services without paying for it, while Cousin Joe runs a small company with 20 employees, makes a product people use, and pays more than his fair share of taxes to compensate for Cousin Eddie. Care to give an example of those assets that move against Any the dollar? Any commodity that trades in dollars will move inverse of the dollar. For example if the value of the dollar goes down, the dollar price of oil goes up. But any commodity like gold, silver, oil, natural gas, wheat, corn, cattle, pork bellies, coffee, etc. all move inverse of the dollar. Commodity-based currencies are also a good idea, Canadian dollar, Aussie dollar, Brazilian real, Russian ruble, Norwegian kroner, to name a few biggies. These countries all are commodity-driven economies and when the dollar falls, 
the price of commodities rise and these countries are all net exporters of commodities and will see an influx of investment in this environment. Real estate is another obvious option as well as gold. Companies that are diversified globally that sell necessity items or commodity items are also good like, Walmart, McDonald's, Procter, and Gamble, Freeport McMoran, etc. The tax code itself is a major issue here as well. It is unconstitutional to start with. A progressive rate of taxation was a Marxist philosophy as are nearly all of the other nanny state social programs offered we today. We have been slow boiled into believing this is the way and not to question our hierarchy. Of course an entrepreneur should take every advantage to do what's best for him. Everyone should obviously consider their own rational self-interest. But by definition, if he is not paying taxes but consuming public services, then yes, he is a parasite. That is the very definition of a parasitic relationship, Take, not give. To answer your question about the retirees, that depends on the situation. Are they living completely on the government dole, ESS plus welfare plus HUD housing plus food stamps, etc.? If so, then yes, they are parasites. If they are living on a social security check, remember, that is their money though and not parasitic by nature. In theory, this is a government-mandated retirement plan and if they stay within their budget of their SS payments, they are not parasitic. They are just living on their own savings albeit for statutory personnel who pay no taxes and consume public service are certainly parasitic just because of their patriotic hero worship, they don't deserve a special privilege of no taxation. In essence, the problem here is a broken system. The system has evolved over time to penalize productivity and promote irresponsible behavior. And with a majority rules voting mechanism, those that are increasingly parasitic by nature want to continue to get their freebies so they vote in their own best interest. Unfortunately, their best interest is destructive. Post error. By your definition, I'm a parasite, banana BTW. I worked my SS off in 2008. Some of you may find this hard to believe, given the size of my SS and with the exception of home loans which I have to pay back, I didn't take a dime from the government in welfare. It's easy to make blanket statements, but they really don't help do anything except incite panic or fear. Our business kept more than 24 people employed or productive in 2008. All of them made good but not great money. Enough to live on. So you might want to keep working on that definition, global wealth. Russ um, H. I don't want to put on Ma Moderator Spurs and Badge. Padna dot but I'd keep the political chatter off your posts, else I'd have Tawakya upside your head. We've had these discussions retaxation and such before, global wealth. I appreciate that you choose to live outside the US, to take advantage of not having to pay for military protection or get taxed for things. But tell me this, if the spit hit the fan where you were living say you were invaded, or there was a military takeover and you stood to lose all your wealth. Would you stay and ride it out, or just move someplace else? I don't ask this as a talk. I'm just curious. What would you call someone who enjoys the benefits of freedom and liberty but doesn't want to pay for them? Someone like that kind of strikes me oh, as. I don't know. Got a parasite? Russ H. BTW, thanks to all who have contributed to this thread. I realize it's hard to not say political things when discussion ideologies, but so far, it's been a pretty smooth ride. Russ H. Actually, I stand by my definition. But my point was, the system offers us incentives to become parasites. As previously stated, it's a broken system that offers the wrong incentives. A system that encourages you to become a parasite, is a broken system. Everyone should do what's in their own self-interest. If the system exists that allows you to take tax breaks that reduces your taxable income to zero, by all means take advantage of the system. Any intelligent person should do whatever it takes to minimize their burden. But that doesn't change the fact that if you are consuming public services without paying for it, that is parasitic. But you say paid no taxes. I find that hard to believe if you paid 24 employees. You paid your match of employment taxes at a minimum. Did your company pay any income taxes? Did you pay property taxes? Sales tax on equipment purchases? Cause when politics or religion are involved. Intelligence seems to cease to exist. I lived this back where I am from. We went from owning a condo and having a car, to pay rent and take the bus. What changed? Productivity went way down, taxes went up, and government had to keep running at huge deficits. 
who paid for it. Middle class, until it pretty much disappeared. One. Credit card companies have cut credit limits like crazy. Lots of people can't buy more with them, so their only chance is to pay them down if they can. Two. No comments on this. Three. Agreed. Please count me in into the group of registered alums for this class. What country in South America is no tax? Que bueno tener otra persona aquí que hable español. Enhorabuena. Good to know. Me either. Interesting information. What countries come to your mind when you mention this? Wow, I'm surprised this conversation has not turned 100% political and has been civilized so far. Okay, I too want to hear more about inflation protection strategies. Also, I'd like to have a discussion about what is the alternative. What if inflation does not hit for the next 10 years? We've been waiting for inflation to hit hard since 2007, but so far it has not happened. What if it does not happen in the next five years? Or the next Off ten? Off the top of my head, I think of Spain. They are sunk in sovereign debt and unemployment measured is over 20%. I also think about Argentina. They had a major crisis in 2002 and are just now digging out. Fairly recently Argentina nationalized about $25 billion in private pension plans. Yikes. Of course the federal government has been doing this with SS for years by spending SS funds in the general fund for non-SS payments. I make no such attempt to convince you of anything. You are clearly a thinking man and I welcome a good debate. How boring would life be if everyone agreed with you? I am only stating my opinion about the current system and my view on the issues at hand. And to be completely honest, I am just too busy, too lazy, or both to look up the data to support it. I am convinced that if this sparks your interest, you will seek the data yourself. If you aren't interested, you will Take move on. Take a look on. at line 174, bottom right corner of the chart. In 2005, the top 50% of wage earners paid about 97% of all income taxes. That leaves, what? 3% to be divided up amongst the bottom 50% ok, so maybe it's not that 50% of adults are parasites. The real number might be 49.5%. Clearly Bounce was more diligent than I on data hunting, but this is one of the key figures I was discussing. Well, I think, Global Wealth's point was, and please correct me if I'm missing it, but I think his point was that when the majority can vote themselves the treasury and by their vote force everyone else to pay for it. There's going to be trouble. Once fewer than half are forced to pay the bills for the total, many will stop working so hard and things slow down because nobody sees any personal gain in expending any effort whatsoever. If you want to see how this has already played out in this country's history, you should consider doing a search on William Bradford and the Pilgrim's story of near starvation. True capitalism saved their lives because it forced those who'd rather ride the gravy train out into the fields to work. Wow! What a great thread! A lot of great thoughts here so I'll chime in with some more one. This economic cycle is not the typical cycle we've seen in our lifetimes unless you were born prior to 1930. We are in the midst of a balance sheet cycle that has impacted all aspects of the economy, not just certain sectors like other recessionary periods. A liquidity crisis affects everyone. There are many similarities between this era and the 1930s. Market crashed in 1929 and it wasn't until much later when unemployment peaked and banks failed. Today, 3 or 15 or 2010, commercial real estate arena has not seen the worst of its pricing descent and this is anticipated to be the biggest problem banking system has yet to face. Bobby two. Global Wealth hit the nail on the head. Without generalizing the people who abuse the social system, the Fed workers, teachers unions, auto workers, and everyone else with one side of the mouth bitching about higher taxes while depending on tax revenue to make their paycheck. We can safely assume this segment has very little if any incentive to change things or to solve the problem. Forget about the pop culture losers who are more concerned with how to find out on their iPod what's on TV this week. Ha, huh, did anyone see what the rioting in Greece was about? The retirement age raised by two years incited a whole generation of people who burned flags, went on strike and fought with threes. I agree. With Bobby again about Belize and Costa Rica. I posted several times they lack the infrastructure they have to sustain long-term growth. Tourism is their number one revenue source. Panama on the other hand has a very stable financial, 
educational and political system. China and system. USA's association with Panama has kept it immune from some of the social unrest we're witnessing now in other CA or SA countries. Viva For Panama. NY, CA, NV, me, NJ, FL have budgets and cash performers that make banks laugh. If any of these states were a small business seeking funding, they would be asked to perform in the theater. Unfortunately, these states house a large percentage of the population who will be seeing unprecedented tax increases. Just GTFO of those states.5 Some talk of Argentina showing real discipline and that may be true, but understand what Greece is about Portugal, Spain, Italy, Ireland are all issuing debts at very high levels that are difficult for their weakening economies to sustain current rates, let alone newly issued at higher rates. And remember, the IMF stepped in to help Argentina but today's economic environment is much too extreme for the IMF to have profound impact. Today Six. ate lunch with a hedge fund and we discussed some opportunities, buying minority-owned small businesses in minority vicinities that comes with special government funding. Nothing glitzy, but there is a captive audience for this arena. Goldman Sachs has spent a lot of money this past year with this concept. Risky, but isn't all biz question mark seven. Bounce where in Spain are you spending Did your I time? Did I read your post right? I spent a few weeks there 10 years ago and yearned to go back. Absolutely one of my favorite places in the world. 8. For those who have a hard time understanding what a trillion is, I am it really you. is difficult to comprehend how much a trillion really is, but a picture's worth a thousand words, tidbit. Just make sure the dollar figures are adjusted to today's dollars when doing Google searches for data me four step plan no, make that seven to one. Have another child two. Enjoy life three. Drink often four. Buy a portfolio of homes. Currently sitting on a decent rental portfolio, but I think adding real estate is a great move versus the weakening dollar. A great contact I made recently just approached me last week to take on a large bank portfolio of 30 properties which might be my ticket back to my wealthy happy old self. The DD has been a bit challenging but initial investigation show nice 25 to 35 percent cash on cash returns. Imho, stay away from Euro.5. Phase my retail operations into pop-up stores to eliminate high costs of occupancy 6. Create a cash-flowing portfolio yielding 10% and buy emerging markets, Asian and Norwegian companies. I am having a hard time buying Chinese stocks, but they're really propelling my portfolio at this moment. 7. Gold, silver, platinum are important pieces to a portfolio. Oil funds are perfect. VNR is heavily hedged against price of oil but counters price of dollar. I was at Torrejón of near Madrid. I left in 1990. In context of the three skills, technical debt clock numbers, human, and conceptual, the numbers say what could never be said from a human word standpoint. Not only do the numbers explain a bankrupt culture and a parasitic government, they are compounding. The system is broken which is not only destroying wealth at breakneck speed, it is the money Backward at the source. Backward decisions now also compound to hide and sell massive character flaws. This translates to a very dangerous time for protecting wealth One or must investing. be 100% productive and patient at the same time. If not carefully your wealth will be the wealth transfer. One cannot buy into this system it must be starved to death. Regarding cycles, those without any assets starting out are close to zero and may take higher relative risks nothing to lose. From an ideal observer standpoint this is the beginning of a global reset that must take place to operate with integrity. Investors are attempting to time this reset currently. Leaders take and maintain control by colon one identifying two defining what damages a paper currency is not an act of omission. It is an act of commission. The backwards thinking kind words is parasitic because it implies a giver and a taker. There must be a giver in the equation that allows the parasite to destroy, it must be allowed by the, the giver. The hardest freedom to destroy is real estate and this is the best investment for the beginner as it also shows I believe real account. estate is better than gold from a utilition and substantial viewpoint this assumes buying with proper due diligence, etc. Gold may provide a quick and easy return at proper timing. But real estate can be built upon tangibly and intangibly and is real work and education.
This is substance incarnate in a rough environment long-term thinking. It is also the basis of all our constitutional freedom. Given any success in the future it will involve real estate in some context anyway. Your objective is to spin off excess cash not cash drains. Excess cash allows you to play the game or secure what you have built. Remember the clock may be opportunity for individuals but the human toll can drift over to reduce all standards of living. The pure answer is a version of self-sufficiency and flexibility. Flexibility equals profitability. My model has been Bill Gates, not for his technical ability, but for the power to live, learn, produce, control, leverage, influence, outside of government, and live in a complementary community that feeds his success. Very few have a more balanced position in society. My own little current and historical world consist of a smaller community that supports a lot of my business needs and allows me to control growth commercial, industrial, acreage, apartments, mini compound, show building for toys, single family, etc. For example today I received about 20 pounds of Northwest salmon and cooked them up eating what I feel is high quality food for health and well-being etc. This comes from a pond and a tenant on one of my properties 40 acres. The self-sufficiency is being able to approach zero in food costs. Setting up a portfolio with a synergistic cost-cutting plan is long-term and a commitment. Instead of attempting to make a big deal one can concentrate on a small community and build a base. Coming from a big city guy who is invested in both worlds, the substance of what is owned and controlled in the smaller community is far greater than the hype of the one big city. One is also much closer to hard reality and farther away from investment distortion. What does the money spent tell you? That it is always paid back by the borrower or the you lender. You just have to be on the right side of the coin question mark. One there are more clowns in economic than in the circus. Two economists enjoyed the illusion of competence. Three more and more people lived at someone else's expense. Four lobbying and lawyers became lucrative professions. Five every imperfection was a call for legislation. Six every traffic accident was an opportunity for wealth redistribution. Seven every trend was fully leveraged. Eight politicians could spend even more that didn't belong to them. Nine financial industry could earn huge fees by selling debt to people who couldn't pay it back. Ten consumers enjoyed a standard of living they couldn't afford. Eleven never before so many people been happily engaged in acts of reckless larceny and ledger domain. Twelve as system aged promises increased. Thirteen beginning in thirties government took it upon itself to guarantee the essentials of life. Fourteen households no longer needed to save. Fifteen anyone still solvent in a America or Britain in 21st century. It was not fault of banks 16 even jobless could get themselves into debt 17 banks allowed public sector to borrow more heavily 18 it helped them go broke Greece and subprime borrowers in private sector 19 something for nothing economic model enjoyed wide support 20 now taxes up and services down 21 today is that tomorrow they didn't worry about yesterday 22 rioters can go home 23 system will collapse on its own it is now pretty much out in the open yet government is still attempting to blow smoke up our posterior and spend even more, this does not reconcile. Tell me that this is not serious. The only question is the tipping point and it is not a hundred years off it is one or two at the most. The culture is in a state of unreality, the fact that it has gone on for a decade is irrelevant currently. This is rooted in the relationship of the public and private sector. At some time in the future the private sector economically will be totally independent of the public sector, this would be the idea. I think maybe you have the statistics a bit backwards or I have misunderstood you. It basically says the top 50% pay 97% of the taxes. Meaning the bottom 50% pay 3% of the taxes. So by this definition, the bottom 50% are the parasites. But you seem to be hung up on the negative connotation of parasite. And rightly so as this is not a pretty word. By definition, a parasite is one who takes but doesn't give. From a tax standpoint, a parasite uses public goods and pays no taxes. But I think you keep missing my point, or maybe I'm not articulating it well enough. The system is broke. The system has devolved into what we have due to the majority rules being in the lower 50%, or the parasitic class. The system has allowed you me and everyone else to take advantage of tax loopholes and minimize our tax burden. I too take advantage Hell, of this. This is one of the residents I moved abroad. I get about $200,000 in tax-free income living abroad due to tax loopholes. 
I too used the relu polls that allowed me to operate my re-business cash flow positive, but income tax negative. Of course we are going to take advantage of these situations because it is in our rational self-interest. But just like you, if I am consuming public goods and not paying taxes, I am a parasite. But I am fairly confident that you are paying taxes. You are paying your re-rent, I mean taxes, sales tax on big ticket items, employment taxes on workers, and maybe business income tax. You are also creating productivity by hiring workers, buying assets, and improving your local economy. But back to the system. It is broken. It has created a situation where we are allowing 50% of the population to live rent-free. You cannot expect a society to survey long term based on this premise. I am voting, and crossing my fingers, that we get some much needed change this fall and again in 2012. I know this seems like I am going political, and I am a bit, but I am neither advocating Dems or Repubs. I am only advocating some change. We need some leaders who aren't career politicians without close ties to the current special interest groups. But considering the broken system voting mechanism, I am afraid we will get more of the Back same. Back to your question, how did I come up with my arbitrary definition? You suggest that I must define first, then support. You must be a scientist. I am not. I really don't care if the chicken came first or the egg. But I do know fried chicken and scrambled eggs make a good I meal. I am sure over the years, I read something that made me stop and think, how did this happen? Then I formed my own opinions. Then I read something else. And spoke to others. Etc. So to answer your question here, I don't know which came first, the chicken or the okay. egg. Here is one of my main points of the whole thing. The numbers are huge, I think that point has been sufficiently made. Here is why what we're about to see in the economy will be a little different than what we've seen in the recent past. Once the interest rate goes up on all these trillions things will rapidly start to get out of hand. This is a piece of a longer article I forgot who it was, maybe Global Wealth, that said it's a snowball rolling downhill. And he's exactly right. And this is really the point to the whole thing. We're in for rising interest rates and rising inflation rates. Now is the time to do a few simple things that will not only help you weather the coming storm, but prosper in it. Some people get vastly wealthier in stagflation which is what I see coming. We have some time to prepare. But there's no time to waste. Who got rich back in the Jimmy Carter days? Sometimes it's easier to ask yourself the question in reverse. Who got crushed? And then do the opposite. Those that got crushed had day jobs that paid them an hourly wage or they were on other types of fixed income like They SS. had debt on consumer perishables CC debt for example, maybe a boat payment and had cash savings maybe a money market fund. People who live like this are going to get hammered again. Those that got rich did the opposite. They owned real things. They owned cash-flowing real estate that had rent increases based on the CPI increases. They didn't depend on an hourly wage to pay their Rather bills. Rather than keep savings in dollars, they probably owned gold or silver something not based in paper. They owed lots of money on cash-flowing assets that were long-term low-interest rate loans. They were able to pay those loan dollars back with cheaper dollars. Doing a few simple things can vastly improve your financial situation. But you need to get started right now. Okay, so the conclusions I am getting are colon one. No matter what one side or the other say, there is no way to agree about politics and or or macroeconomic policies. Dead point dot two. All seem to agree real assets like re and silver and gold are good investments for when the inflationary trend hits. Two dot one REI is more solid than gold and silver thanks to the cash flow it generates, assuming positive cash flow. Two dot two municipalities and states are their broke. only recourse is to continue taxing the rich. Re taxes have only one way to go up. We are already seeing it, and there are no indications this trend will change. Two dot three we must get re properties that cash flow of leases that protect us as to rent increases to adjust for inflation and for increasing re-taxes.2.4 we must finance these properties at today's fixed rates and prices, but of flexible terms to receive the income very closely related to 2.3 or it may even be the same point. What have you guys get out of this conversation? I would disagree that your number one is a dead point, it's just one of disagreement ha ha ha, did that sound redundant? No harm in disagreeing as long as it stays respectful. I personally enjoy having my thoughts challenged as it helps me clarify things myself.
we certainly must refrain from too much politics, but economics is something we should all think about if and discuss. If you are a reinvestor I am not anymore, then now is the time to buy. Sure, prices may fall a bit more from here, or they may rise, but certainly they are near the bottom. While you want to buy a low or sell high in any investment, pinpointing the absolute bottom is unlikely. And if you have the credit to do it, buy re with Money is credit. cheap and with the impending inflation, you will be paying it back with less valuable dollars. Finance for the longest term you if can, you can get. get 30 years on investment property, do it. Especially at tilde 5%. If you can't get bank credit, find investors. The money will cost a bit more, but with inflation coming, you will still be ahead. Gold can be either an investment, an income stream, or a store of wealth, depending on how you do it. Minus 1. Investment. Buy stocks of gold miners, gold royalties, and ETFs. Just like any other investment, keep tight stop losses and earn your capital appreciation and dividends as they pay them. Two income stream: sell options on gold ETFs, collect premiums. Three store of wealth: instead of keeping your savings account in cash, buy coins and take physical delivery. I agree, and I think this is one of the best threads we've ever had here without having things disintegrate into politics. I sincerely hope this can continue because this is a great thread, and is covering a lot of sticky and hard to explain topics. I also appreciated the rest of your post a great deal. Global wealth I think that's the perfect place to take this thread next assuming inflation or stagflation is in the near future. What to do to maximize return? And are there any case studies of investors who made millions in these past cycles? How long do we plan for and what brings us out of an inflationary or stagflation situation? Thanks again, Russ H. P.S. Forgot to add. Many thanks for clarifying your definition of parasite. Since you place yourself in that category as well, it is easier for me to understand or relate to. Thanks guys for keeping this civil. Lots of different opinions yet the conversation is you guys are awesome. I would like to know that also, there's Please. only one answer and someone mentioned it several pages back. I don't remember who it was and don't have time to go back and give them credit for the correct answer, but it has been mentioned. Economic growth Massive economic growth means more capitalism, more freedom to conduct business opportunities and less government intervention. I haven't seen in a very long time. Moreover, I don't even hear many politicians on any side talking about wanting to create those conditions, except maybe in China to some extent. That's why I see planning on profiting from stagflation as such a no-risk move at this the point. The economy doesn't have to get better to get wealthier. But even if it does, doing the few things I suggest are still a smart move. It's literally a win-win play. Anytime I hear about hyperinflation, I'm reminded of this particular episode from the cartoon DuckTales. I remember watching this when I was, oh I don't know, 10 years old or so. It made a big impression on me at that age, and now thanks to the miracle of the internet and YouTube, I can share it with you by the way. I tried to find a clip without all of the political dialogue interruptions and references to websites. But I just couldn't find I it. I have without. no affiliation with reference to Hopefully, website. Hopefully, you can ignore all of that and just enjoyed the video. Arm equals the equals xpz 3 s 0 dpd 0 YouTube. DuckTales teaches monetary inflation. Ha ha ha! I can't believe I just watched DuckTales again. Who am I kidding? I was watching Dora this morning and Scooby Doo last DSL night. has been down. So this has been delayed. I think that yeah Euro TMLL deserve a big hand for this discussion and here it is colon great colon great colon great colon cheers colon cheers colon cheers yeah Euro TMM so proud of you all. For the discussion in this thread, I really am. I mean where else can you have this kind of discussion? The greeter, the, the server. The gas jockey question mark sides of this issue have done a yeoman's job in making their points. First, I lean to the left and as I read more. Eat a Euro TMS to the right dot in some of the previous threads that deal with this and similar issues. I jokingly said I like to argue, meaning Our that. detail does one have a chance to come to an informed decision? And this thread enables you to do just that. As some of know, I have been most concerned with what is happening with our middle class. The large percent of them have passive income except savings, interest, and SS that the older ones were looking forward to is about as passive as you I get. I mean, you live long enough, and there it is! Exclamation mark! Yes. Those in their 50 euro TMS and up, counting on it. I factored it into my plans. When I reach that age, 
I will not go hungry if it is the Euro TMT there, but some less fortunate will doubt the population growth has not kept up with the social benefits, so as stated above we needed a larger population, even if we started now, we still have to wait 18 minus 20 years for the new generation to reach working age. We may not have that long. Here we have to thank Russ and Skid for stepping up to the plate and volunteering to help remedy the problem our country has with a restricted tax base and dwindling population. These two astute members of our illustrious forum rightly discerned this a few years ago and have sacrificed themselves, staying up half the night for months on end, giving up their manhood and have been successful in adding two offspring to help our country. Thanks guys. The solution this did not originate with me. But I think it would help to solve this problem. And here it is, drum roll please. We need to either reduce our benefits or enlarge our tax base. We have a very large underground economy with our illegal workers, working off the books. Let's just make them illegal, comma, dot, 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 bring them above ground and collect taxes and thicker, thereby adding maybe 30 million to our rolls now. No waiting thus saving both SS and Medicare. What thing? Okay, okay, too much quoting here. So I will forego the quoting. A problem I can't say the problem because there are multiple, as I see it, is the tax code creates the incentive to become in a parasite. parasite, continues to vote for more freebies by way of voting in politicians who support such policies. By virtue of Pareto's principle 80 or 20 rule, 20% control 80% of the wealth. Yes, I know this is generalized and not exact statistics, but you get the Unfortunately, point. Unfortunately, the 20% are in the minority and are at the mercy of the parasitic majority of voters. If you, me, Russ or Bounds can find a way to completely avoid taxation, legally, it is rational self-interest I am to bound do so. by my own morals to do what's best for me. If I don't pay taxes and consume public goods, I am a parasite. But morally, I am doing what is best for Herein me. Herein lies the problem. We live in a society where this is possible. I never said only income tax payments constituted productivity. Reread my post. I used the income tax payments that Bounce posted as one of the measurements. But as I have previously stated, if you are running a business, you are paying taxes in some way, shape or form. You are paying property tax, big ticket sales tax, employment tax etc. This is paying tax. Don't get too hung up on the income tax statement. How many people in the lower 50% are employers? Investors? Entrepreneurs? I don't know, nor do I even know how to find this data. But I don't really care either. In Norway they have a 200% tax on alcohol. They don't have much of a problem with drinking. A beer at a pub costs about $13. How many do you want? The point is when you want less of something, tax it. Our tax code penalizes productivity with a progressive tax rate and double taxation on investment income. That is a sure way to reduce productivity. But the tax code provides incentives for buying a new house by way of tax credits and artificially low interest rates. It also has no tax on consumption federal level and in many cases provides tax incentives to promote consumption. So our tax code has created an incentive system to consume and a penalty system to produce. This drives down productivity because generations of Americans have been penalized for working too hard. After a few generations, it becomes ingrained. Now it has become even more lopsided as the parasites are in the majority and control the vote thereby limiting our ability to create positive change. Mm, this only contributes to the get something for nothing problem that we already have. The flip side of this solution is to send the three crore illegals back to where they came from, thereby immediately creating three crore job openings for Americans. Talk about an instant fix to the unemployment problem. All right, now I feel like I am arguing with Yoda, smxf colon dot actually. I don't correlate educated with productive. There are lots of people in the academic world content to continue to be a parasite but my issues with education will have to take another thread. I would like to see some stats on education in the voting public, Bounce. The fact is, money rules the world and the wealthy are in the minority. Not to say all wealthy people are smart, but by and large. They are smarter than the average or else they wouldn't become wealthy. These wealthy people, due to their minority status, are not in control of the vote. 
leaving those less wealthy the voting majority. The wealthy class are the productive class as they are the employers, investors and entrepreneurs. I leave room for my own counterpoint here for the Wall Streeters as they are parasites and wealthy, but for different reasons, but at least they pay taxes. I, for one, suggest we give up this debate over trivial matters and agree to disagree Colin to agree. Colin the ops intent of this thread was to focus on solutions to the matter of a possible or probable hyperinflation crisis on the horizon. Can we get topic? This is one of those times where I really need to keep quiet. I am not even sure of the stats regarding the legal citizenship or even the alive and breathing status of many who wind up voting these days. Colon I agree, but that isn't going to happen. This would be second best. They already have free medical, might as well collect Easy. something. Let's make the masses wealthy, really they already are, in I'll this country. I'll take rivers in Egypt for $500, Alex, Russ H. Colin great, fair enough. Now what were we talking about? About 100 years ago, you had to be a property owner to vote in the US. This tied your ability to vote with your ability to produce. I would argue that we were more capitalist during this time. And remember, the US was not created as a democracy. The word democracy does not appear once in the US Constitution. The US was created as a republic, meaning rule by law as opposed to democracy which means rule by majority. A simple analogy will illustrate the difference. A man is accused of In the of Old robbery. West the sheriff gathered a posse and chased him down. In a democracy they would take a vote and if majority wins, they hang him on the spot. In a republic they take him back to town and follow due process to determine his fate. In this case, do you want a democracy if you were the alleged robber? So I vote to eliminate the democracy and go back to the basis of our country's founding. A republic. P font size equals 4 face equals times new Roman greater than I hate it when I type out a long response, lose it all for whatever reason and have to start all over again. Dot and NBSP. My chemo brain I loses all track of where I was going. Dot and NBSP. That just happened. Dot 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 and NBSP. UGH. And NBSP. OMG. I hate it when this happens. Less than or font or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new Roman or font and NBSP. Less than or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new Roman greater than anyway. When I made this post originally, I wanted to start it by giving people some sense of the enormity of our debt load and NBSP, and then move on to a series of other issues that concluded with the realization of what economic situation will inevitably occur as a result of all this dot and NBSP, then, being able to see what's coming. People can act now to prepare for it. Less than or font or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new Roman or font and NBSP. Less than or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new Roman greater than if you've never heard of the equation strong greater than p e equals mv less than or strong where gross national strong u greater than p less than or u or strong product equals strong u greater than m less than or u or strong any supply times strong u greater than v less than or u or strong velocity. You can see it playing out right now. Dot and NBSP. In a recession, the strong U greater than V less than or U or strong velocity of money slows down. Dot and NBSP. Fewer dollars change hands. Less than or font or PP font size equals 4 face equals times new Roman or font and NBSP. Less than or PP font size equals 4 face equals times new Roman greater than if you remember any math. If strong U greater than V less than or U or strong and NBSP goes down in value, then strong U greater than V less than or U or strong times strong U greater than M less than or U or strong will go down and therefore strong U greater than P less than or U or strong will go down in value. Less than or font or PP font size equals 4 face equals times new Roman or font and NBSP. Less than or PP font size equals 4 face equals times new Roman greater than what the Fed has done to get strong U greater than P less than or U or strong back up again is to increase strong U greater than M less than or U or strong and NBSP. They throw more money into the economy. Less than or font or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new Roman or font and NBSP. Less than or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new Roman greater than hopefully that will make sense to most.
less than or font or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman or font and nbsp less than or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman greater than however once the economy starts churning and money starts changing hands again meaning strong u greater than v less than or u or strong increases all the dextra strong u greater than m less than or u or strong any in circulation will result in skyrocketing and nbsp semicolon strong u greater than p less than or u or strong rises inflation dot and nbsp that cartoon of the ducks and the money supply and nbsp someone posted is great thanks to whoever did that less than or font or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman or font and nbsp less than or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman greater than the extra money has to be taken out of circulation less than or font or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman or font and nbsp less than or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman greater than here's the rub dot 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 and nbsp i don't think they're going to do it and if they do it won't be fast enough dot and nbsp we don't even know who got much of the money less than or font or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman or font and nbsp less than or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman greater than right now we don't see inflation because much of that money and nbsp has been and nbsp sitting on the sidelines waiting for prices to bottom out dot and nbsp catman do says it's starting to trickle in and i don't doubt it dot and nbsp all that money is going to be used to buy assets at rock bottom prices dot and nbsp the act of buying things up is what will trigger the inevitable inflation dot and nbsp as time goes on the price of those things purchased for a song will skyrocket less than or font or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman or font and nbsp less than or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman greater than those sitting on all that cash will trigger the inflation that they will benefit from less than or font or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman or font and nbsp less than or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman greater than there will be huge winners in all this those who buy assets and have no consumer debt dot and nbsp less than or font or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman or font and nbsp less than or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman greater than there will be huge losers caught in the crunch of stagflation stagflation being the combination of a stagnating economy and rising inflation and here's why dot 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 and nbsp as inflation the most and nbsp cruel tax increase of all on and nbsp the poor and middle class and nbsp rears its ugly head the fed will raise interest rates dot and nbsp borrowed money will cost more dot and nbsp credit card interest will lead the way followed by car loan interest and interest on other consumer debt dot and nbsp everything will cost more but wages won't follow the trend because business loans also cost more and business taxes are going to go up as well dot and nbsp business won't have the extra cash to pay workers more money dot and nbsp wages will not rise but the spending power of people's take home pay will go way down dot and nbsp anyone living on a fixed income will suffer less than or font or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman or font and nbsp less than or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman greater than this is coming dot and nbsp so assuming you follow me and believe me what do you do now less than or font or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman or font and nbsp less than or pp font size equals 4 face equals times new roman greater than if you're living on your credit cards and thinking of buying a new sports car or boat for the summer then personally i think you're missing something less than or font or p greater than i have no idea what just happened maybe this post wasn't meant to be of course i believe my agenda is not counterproductive but that is certainly debatable
I would like to see a return to true, free market capitalism. We haven't had this in any of our lifetimes. I would like to see a return to the constitution, as it seems our government is not just current administration but for many, many years take liberties with its interpretation. I would like to see the Fed completely abolished and a return to specie money. I would like to see the government step out of the way and allow its citizens to make their own decisions. I would like to see the income tax completely eliminated and replaced with a consumption tax. And I want to be king that last part was just a little extra since I was already making my wish list, but I realize many or all of these things are not likely to Is happen. Is my agenda productive for society? I would like to think so, but I am also a realist. Until such time that my dream world exists, I will continue to learn and try to understand the motives of our leaders and profit from their inefficiencies. I PS. don't even own a TV so I wouldn't be watching idiot talk shows. I spend all my time on the internet debating economics with you. Colon wow. Cheers. This thread is at the point that it needs to be moved to the purple forum. If you know what I mean. Why don't we start debating Ron Paul while we are at I Apple? was going to bring up Peter Schiff, but we can go with Ron Paul. JK. I think we've covered it. Could we just start posting on we are going to Shall come out ahead? Shall we call this horse officially beaten? No. I'd like to continue beating the horse. I mean, after all, we do have a smilly for times like these colon be dead horse 5, Ross okay. H. Okay, fast learners, time for a little fun dot search around for the battle hymn of the republic, start it playing, and read the following aloud, with feeling okay, wasn't that fun? Now, search for an instrumental version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Ready? Okay, start it playing, and recite the same thing you just said. I got to say, I've been longing to have ideological discussions on here. But it seems like that's impossible. While a few stalwart souls can discuss things on this level, someone always has to come in and poop on things. W or politics. You get that award today. It's not something I say lightly. And I'm sorry for coming down on you so hard. But for me, it needs to be said. Global wealth following up W or a quip about Ron Paul just takes it further down that slippery slope. Know what I like? Cue up Battle Hymn of the Republic, or Over the Rainbow, your choice. I'd like to be able to have high level discussions on the fast lane stuff that talks about both theory and the nuts and bolts of how to best profit from things to come. I'd like that discussion to continue without rolling eyeballs or snarky comments. So if you can contribute to the discussion, please do it. If you feel the need to go and vent, or wave a political flag, go to Thanks, Russ H. PS her interview just showed up early. I will be back to ask some questions of the folks who have been contributing. Thanks for your patience. Wow, I think you missed my point completely. My Ron Paul reference was to make the point that debating which you would rather have Capitalism or democracy is on par with debating Ron Paul. I am not taking this political in the least. So, please explain how debating whether one would rather have capitalism versus democracy or the education level of the voting public has any merit in a business discussion? Please explain to me exactly how I earned this award so I can make the proper acceptance speech and thank the proper people. Would explaining sarcasm Would help? you rather I engage in Ron Paul discussions? I for one think the debating on whether one would rather have capitalism versus democracy or the education level of the voting public belongs at best in the off-topic forum, but more likely in the rich dad forum hence my purple forum reference. My apologies for not allowing you and your stalwart souls to have your upper level discussion. Feel free to continue. Interviewee is being taken across the street by Sharon and KT, so I can respond quickly to you, Kurt I can be the meanest, most sarcastic MF in the world. I was raised that way. And I mean nah so nasty you think about it years later. I relish tasting blood. Feeds my inner beast. Here's the thing, I choose not to. Haven't been that way for more than 20 years. Not because it isn't fun I love it. But because it hurts people. If your real point was you could have said it that way. No one would have misunderstood you. If you honestly feel sarcasm is a better way to communicate, then by all means, do it. I stop being sarcastic, because I was too often misunderstood. And because I got into a lot of banging heads both intellectually, and in real life. That was my point. Russ H. I'll step up to the plate here. If I have been sarcastic in any way, it was only meant in humor, without any malice.
If taken that way, I apologize. I did not mean the quip to be taken as political, only in jest. I have no interest in pushing the limit of the forum boundaries. I think this discussion has been thought provoking and mature. I think even if you disagree with me or anyone else on here, it is always good to see things through a different set of lines. I know Scott and others have certainly raised quality questions worth mentioning. There is certainly a difference between an ideological discussion and one of politics. I think we have all been pretty good here by removing politics from the forum. Let's keep it that Kurt, way. To answer your question, in my view we are discussing macroeconomic ideas and understanding these ideas can be very beneficial to business. I will even say critical to business success. By provoking the thoughts and discussions in a rational way, we can learn from one another. Not in a complaining, I hate government kind of way, but in a how can we benefit kind of way. Many in this thread have discussed ideas on how to profit from this and without understanding macro conditions, it is difficult to understand how these ideas are even meritous. If one doesn't understand interest rates and its impact on your investments and buying power, you wouldn't understand why it is good to borrow when rates are so If you low. don't understand the factors with what I believe to be impending inflation, you won't understand how to profit from an inflationary environment. I am not discrediting your knowledge one bit, but I am sure there are many readers on here who have no idea the impact of higher or lower many interest rates. Many don't even know what I mean when I say interest rates. For this reason, this thread should be educational. I am sure many understand. But how many on here don't understand the implications of fiat money and don't central you think banking? This impacts business? Not because we can change the current situation, but because we can learn to understand it better in order to profit from I it. I realize I am guilty here of getting off track on a couple of posts, but in my mind, the ideas were interrelated. I will strive to stay on this straight my and apologies. narrow. My apologies. I went a little over the edge here. My point stands, but delivery was over the top. I am sorry. Thanks exactly. for putting it so eloquently, global wealth. Okay, here are the cues I mentioned yesterday colon 1. What do we as investors or business owners need to know and do to profit from the different scenarios? I hear records of owning RE but what if your RE was purchased during the run up? Do you walk away, and try to get other properties? Do you hang on, and hope the markets will recover? Refeed W or a lower fixed rate? Try for a loan mod? Or do you do something else? Question mark two. What type of education or propaganda needs to be disseminated to the general public but kids and adults to allow for a smoother recovery? Please note, I am not asking how to educate the general population into being more financially savvy. I am asking what type of information or actions on the part of the general public will lead to a smoother recovery. Thanks again to all for making this such a great thread. Thank you sign, Russ H. Okay. If I understand correctly, this is where we stand US. Gov is in a bad financial shape. The next shape. economic condition is inflation, which is inevitable and just a matter of when. High interest rates Wages are, coming. are not expected to increase. Invest on assets that do well during inflationary conditions, buy real estate investments with today's dollars, enjoying the low interest rates, and try to get them as fixed payments for the long term 15 years or more. This depends on having access to financing, use OPM or pay cash if available. Rent your properties with short-term leases so you can adjust for inflation quickly, get rid of bad Pay debt. Off credit card debt and variable rate loans cause we are expecting rates to go high, way high. Invest in hard assets like gold and silver, to protect your capital. Commodities tend to do well as they adjust automatically for inflation. Dollar is going down in value. Be a contrarian with regards the dollar. Work your ass off to pay off credit card debt. Provide services that can be quickly adjusted for inflation. Don't lock yourself in long term contracts at fixed price. Try to put together investments so other people invest their money and you can leverage this, while providing for them a great ROI. Trading time for money, as a wage, is risky as wages won't raise fast enough during inflationary times. Heck, they don't even raise fast enough when the economic conditions are good. OK, so that is my summary based on this long conversation. What do you guys have on your list? P.S. Russ, sorry, was typing while you posted your questions, and I don't have answers for them. With regards to question 1, that is the proverbial rock and a hard place. 
I would say if you have positive or at least net zero cash flow on a property though you may be upside down, try to ride the wave. If you walk, you will hurt your credit and jeopardize your future deal-making ability. As I said before, personally I am on the moral fence when it comes to walking away from a mortgage. On the one hand, you have a contractual obligation. But on the other, the banks played a huge role in reprice appreciation. One could argue due to their involvement in creating the bubble, it is now their problem to solve. But from a contract standpoint, if you break your end of the bargain, you suffer the consequences under your contractual obligation so therefore it really is a business decision and you must personally weigh the cost or benefit analysis. If you sit on a property that costs you $4,000 or month in shortage, if you walk, will your positive $4,000 override your negative credit mark? Each situation is different and requires your own analysis. I personally don't have much faith in the remarket recovering for many, many years. There is an enormous amount of excess supply in both commercial and residential re so this will take years, maybe decades to normalize. This is also a part of your cost or benefit analysis. Of course you may feel differently about the remarket than I do, but make sure you are supporting it with facts, not feelings. In regards to two, this is a tough one. Teaching financial intelligence would be great, but most people are just too damn lazy to want to learn I it. I know many business owners that have no idea about investing in interest rates. If they don't want to bother to learn, the general public are never going to buy I think it. we are on a long road to recovery and like the Great Depression, this is creating a reset in the public mindset. Right now the companies in the S&P 500 have more cash on their balance sheets than ever in history. They are saving. And guess who runs these businesses? Yep. People. The personal savings rate is now at 8%, whereas in 2007 it was basically 0%. People are not consuming as much and this mindset may take a generation to get back to a consumption way I of life. I hope it never returns. But I am sure it will. The general public need to learn personal responsibility. I know teaching financial intelligence is next to impossible. But if we could just get people to realize spend less than you make is actually a good thing, we will have made a tremendous leap forward. In order to have a smooth recovery we need a violent one. We need to have companies like Citi, GM, Bank of America, and Chrysler go belly we up. We need to allow the free market to work out the issues. Right now people are afraid of the uncertainty. They don't know if things are going to get better, or worse, so they are on lockdown. If we would just allow the too big to fail to just actually fail. The solvent and well-run businesses will take up the slack and fill the void but in the no market. But no one is willing to take personal responsibility so we just keep bailing them out. Failure is a part of success and until we allow failure to happen, no one will really enjoy the success. MJ, if you are reading, I wrote about this thread in my newsletter that publishes tomorrow and put a link to the site in there. I wanted to make sure anyone who reads my letter sees the source and hopefully it will drive some traffic here. This is an interesting thread dot because I live in Australia and not the US like most of you. With everything I read on this site I have to try and figure out what applies to Australia, what doesn't, and how what's happening in the US and other countries affects us here. So here's a question I'd like to ask. If the US is going to enter a period of high inflation or stagflation, what effect is that going to have on the economy of other countries? I'm particularly interested in the effect on Australia, and how can people in other countries profit from these conditions or flow on effects? There was also mention that commodities do well, so I'll mention that the largest by a long way listed company on the Australian Securities Exchange is BHP Billiton, the world's largest mining company. They have a very strong balance sheet, high profit margins, strong operating cash flows and their portfolio of low cost, long life assets are highly diversified across numerous hard commodities and geographic locations. Quick analysis tells me BHP is way too expensive right now. I'm a value investor at the core and BHP is trading at 5x book value and about 20x free cash flow. They would flow. need to come down to about 40 to 45 or share for me to be interested. I'm guessing you looked at BHP's NYSE listing and did your analysis from that? Have you checked out the ASX or UK listing? It wasn't that long ago that the UK listing was 20% less than the ASX listing. Not sure how the US listing compares to either of those? 
Anyway just thought I'd put it out. Another there. possible way to benefit from inflation is to invest in highly profitable companies that can increase earnings without needing much more additional capital. Top line increases faster than expenses therefore profits increase. Buying in of course at a price that's below the company's intrinsic value. Like. Think about companies that have very little need for R&D or capital improvement. Coca-Cola, Hershey, Procter and Gamble are a few. They have little need to reinvest to improve their product. Unlike companies like GM, Ford, Toyota which constantly need to improve and retool every year to keep current. I was thinking of software companies as well. Would that fit the description? I'm thinking no the computer biz is constantly upgrading. Can you think of a PC of software that hasn't changed in 10 years? Coke, Pepsi, Hershey's all have stayed pretty much the same over 10 to 60 years. Emo, most software companies don't fit this description. They require constant upgrades to keep current. There are very little capital costs however, but labor costs are very high. I am not saying software companies aren't good options, but they don't fit into my investment mode. I bought a company today trading at about $15 or share and they have about $11 or share in cash on the balance sheet. To me, this provide a significant margin of error. Also, I want to invest in companies where I can wrap my brain around how they make money. I am woefully ignorant of the software business model and therefore I don't feel I look this at it is this for me. Way. If I can understand how the company works, I will consider it as an investment. If I feel I could run the company, or a company in a similar field, it fits my mind. I think software companies have a better chance than most other industries of fitting this description. The application gets developed once. It is then sold again and again and again. In addition to buying a license, customers will pay for services to install the software, configure it suit their particular requirements and train their users. They also typically pay an additional 20% of the license price per year for maintenance to get support and new releases. Nice recurring income. What's the additional cost of producing the product for the second customer, or the third? Next to nothing. How much do a set of CDs or DVDs cost? How much cost? to ship them in the post? Meanwhile the developers continue to refine and support the product, and add functionality. Often drawing from their library of pieces of code building blocks if you will to add new modules. They can leverage previous work to develop new modules, new releases. From a support point of view a customer problem gets fixed and then the fix is rolled out as part of the next release if it's not something that's specific to a particular customer. As revenues increase they can add to their sales team and or or develop a network of resellers whose efforts and relationships they can leverage off further. Financial services is another industry that has good scope to increase profits with minimal additional For example, capital. Funds management. I really believe purchasing properties at a fraction of yesterday's prices is truly the road to significant wealth. While I've been extremely bearish on the markets for years you can trace my posts dating back a couple of years I never expected to pay a year 1985 to 1990 Properties prices. sold for 200k just a couple of years ago are now on the market for 30k. Banks own a lot of real estate these days. Granted these are these are typical redlined areas. I can make all of my investment back within three years via rent. If my plan goes well, my children's college funds have been filled, and then Bum. some. I think the dead clock is nothing to be ignored here. This and the FDIC commercials.